Great. Excellent. Well, uh, well, Ryan, welcome to Durham. Uh, what what have you made of things so far? Uh, I enjoyed the snow yesterday. <laughs> that was uh, an interesting uh, experience at the at the races, meeting everyone. But um, look, mate, it's a fantastic place. I'm really looking forward to uh, getting up here full time. Um, I think I get here on the second of January officially. Um, and yeah, just looking for places to live and all doing all the hard stuff for the family and things. But um, mate, nothing but good good stuff so far. And your family are going to relocate. I think you live in um, Harlem now, don't you? Which is a beautiful place, not too far from Amsterdam. Yeah, mate. We we've been there for what over five and a half years now. Um, I've got two kids that speak fluent Dutch, which is quite weird. Uh, listening to them go about it with their mates, but um, yeah, that that they're all moving across once we get settled and find um, you know schools and all that sort of stuff. They're uh, they're looking forward to getting here and. My son's pestering me because he wants to go to a Man City game, which I'm trying to let him know that this is not the area <laughs> that he should be following Man City. But, uh, you know, kids will be kids. Yeah. Well, there's uh, Sunderland on the doorstep and obviously Newcastle United as well. So you, you're spoilt for choice from that point of view. Um, now, I gather you don't like flying. So the handy thing is there's a lovely ferry that links the Tyne to Imude and in Holland as well. So you can you can all come over on the ferry next time. Well, yeah, we, we've actually done that a few times. It's actually a really good night. The kids love it. And, uh, you know, my wife and I quite enjoy it as well. But, um, yeah, look, we, we just can't wait to get here and, and settle in. And, you know, we, we this is our home. This is what, you know, we're going to make sure we enjoy every part of being in the northeast and you know hopefully we're here for quite a long time yeah it's been a roller coaster year hasn't it uh, take take us back to april because your world was turned upside down in april wasn't it mate it, it's very hard to even fathom what went on it's um you know i think i'm a pretty fit and healthy guy always have been no history of any sort of illness um but yeah we we actually flew across to a place called bewilderwood um, we were at an amusement park with the family and literally I just said to someone, I just don't feel well and, and basically laid down. And unfortunately for me, um, I woke up seven days later and, and, you know, I say unfortunately, but, um, you know, the, my memory of those seven, I have zero memory of what happened. Um, I, I'm very obviously grateful that when I laid down, I put my head on the daughter of someone who had just finished her CPR course and basically um, brought me back. Um, and again, I don't know why the doctors don't know what happened. Um, you know, they just, say to me, Brian, just tell me that last bit again. Cause you just froze there. You, you put your head down. Yeah. I, I, look, I put my head down on the foot of a five-year-old girl whose mother who was standing next to her had just finished her CPR course. And she saw that I was in trouble and applied CPR and brought me back. Um, and basically over the, you know, without getting too morbid, apparently over the course of the next two or three days, I died 15 times or something, but something kept bringing me back. And, um, you know, I think someone said my chances of survival was 7% or something, but mate, here I am to tell the tale, still smiling till still uh, enjoying life. And, I guess, and I mentioned this yesterday at a function we were at, if any good can come of it, please, if you're 40 years of age and above, go get checked out. Just go to your GP, you know, get all the tests just in case, you know, the, the amount of people that have, um, you know, social media me or text me and saying stuff, mate, because of what happened to you, we went and got checked up and they found something and, you know, not that that would have helped me, but again, if we can help someone else, I think us, all us males, I think we, sometimes we carry on a bit too bravely and just say, you know what, how about we just get checked out? And if anything's going amiss, hopefully someone can help and find out. And did they ever get to what the cause was or anything like that or not? Uh, Does it mate, remain a mystery? Yeah, there's, there's, there's a few theories. <laughs> um, depends on uh, which social network you uh, listen to because there's always uh, theories about it. But you know, they're also, they're, they are finding out there are a lot more research into COVID and what COVID does to people and, and their hearts because the blood, they say, is a bit stickier and it makes your heart work a bit harder. And 
there's been a lot more cases of, um, you know, heart troubles from 40 to 50 year olds. So, you know, they're, they're looking at the, at those sort of things, but in the end of the day, I can't look backwards and my, you know, my cardiologist, he's very happy with where I'm at. He's, you know, I have an ICD in my chest, which he says I'll never use, but it's my, um, I guess my insurance papers, so to speak. Um, I've got the same thing that um, Ericsson has, and he plays for Manchester United. He's just been at the World Cup, so obviously follow how well he's going. Um, and that to me is just, yeah, it's it's there, but I, I, I've i even got to that point where I don't even realise it's there anymore. So, um, you know, like I say, very lucky. I'm very grateful to still be here and the help of uh, that lady called Becky Bassett. But now it's in my past and I, I'm going forward and looking forward to a long and, and happy life. And uh, that starts with Durham in the new year then. So exciting times ahead. You've been with the Netherlands for the last six years and they did some pretty impressive stuff at the recent World Cup as well, which you uh, had a hand in. And uh, bringing what you've learned there into the, the county system for the first time. Yeah, 100%. You know, I'll, I'll be honest, I've always watched county cricket. You know, obviously being from Australia, we always we always love to beat the English, don't get me wrong, but we always have had an appreciation of county cricket. I think it's one of the great competitions in the world. And as a coach, I've always wanted to be involved in county cricket. That's been very clear from the start. And to get this opportunity at, at Durham is, you know, again, very grateful. I think it's a squad full of talent. I think it's a squad that can go places. If we get our mentality and our game plan right, I don't see what can hold us back. And, you know, the North East has always had a, a great history of producing fast bowlers. And, you know, hopefully the production line keeps going because, you know, fast bowlers are so important to winning games of cricket. But, mate, the facts are to win a championship game, you've got to take 20 wickets. And to do that takes time. So our batters need to give our bowlers time to, to, to win us games. So, you know, we're going to be pretty positive. I hate draws. I know I've said that before when people have asked me, but I hate draws. So that's something that you, I'll... You wouldn't, have enjoy, you wouldn't have enjoyed last season. <laughs> well, that's right. You know, and again, that, that, that's, that's the mindset thing. I, I understand that sometimes there are, there's always going to be a draw in a game, but as long as my players are sitting there saying to themselves, how do we win this game of cricket? No matter what the situation, how can we win this game of cricket? If they do that, I think the mindset is right. And I think you'll find we will win the games of cricket. Great. And have you got a fastballer up your sleeve at the moment by any chance? <laughs> Mate, well, there's, there's a few. They, uh, hopefully England stopped picking them. No, that, that, that's, that's, of course, uh, being a bit funny. But look, the, the facts are that our best bowlers hopefully do play for England. You know, I'm very aware that the county system needs to produce England players. So um, they're, they're the cold, hard facts. If it means we lose two or three of them, it's my job to build depth so we do have fast bowlers in, in reserve ready to go. And like I say, the, the academy here has been unbelievable in churning out the number of fast bowlers. And I'll be putting pressure on them to continue to do so. And, you know, fast bowlers are rare and, you know, we have to look after them. We've got to take care of them, make sure that, um, you know, they're rested well. But when they play, they go full steam ahead and they're, they're there to try and take us wickets. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. Well, thanks very much for talking to us today and uh, enjoy your Christmas. And then hopefully we'll, uh, we'll see you in the new year. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for having me. Okay. Thanks very much.